dreams we will have when you're lying next to me So take me to the top Your world is so bright Take me to the top of the chart What is going on everybody? It's Taylor Roberts and welcome to Off The Deep End. If you're just joining us for the first time, we're in the middle of a Melanie Martinez deep dive where we explore her artistry through her music, which means new Melanie Martinez reactions until we reach the end of her discography. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell button so you get notification of when those new videos drop. Hop on over to Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Give me a follow. OTTE merch stores open, link is down in the description as well as our Discord server, link is down in the description as well. So, I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm a little nervous for this album because I listened to uh, the Crybaby album and I was not a huge fan of that album. I really liked the Dollhouse EP um, and because I, I understand the whole concept of the story here of the Crybaby character. Um, I just feel like delivered in a giant dose like Crybaby was just didn't have as much as an impact for me as just a little dollhouse EP had. We're gonna do it anyway, so I mean, let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. Okay, so right off the bat, I can hear a different kind of style of production. Um, it does feel a little bit more advanced, I guess, if you want to say. But I mean it in like a good way. Uh, that glockenspiel. The glockenspiel instrument. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Uh, uh, that... Anyways, uh, is definitely still heavily prevalent, um, but I think it's a way just to kind of connect the uh, the overall sound from the Crybaby era into this K twelve era. Um, but I'm still a little, a little, uh, still a little weary about about this album um, because I. I can tell it's a continuation of Crybaby, but now everything is just kind of focused around K-12, school. So, um, yeah, we'll keep going. I just waited till recess to make her pay. Mommy, why do I feel sad? Should I give him away or feel this bad? No, 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 don't you choke. Daddy John didn't go for the throat. Okay. Her face was fucked up and my hands were bloody. We were in the playground, things were getting muddy. The 
she broke us up after I broke her. And my one true love called me a monster. Mommy, why do I feel sad? Should I give him away or feel this bad? That one was uh that one was better than the first one. Uh I I really liked the the chorus on this song though. Um something about it when they did that little pitch shift um toward this the end of the chorus. I really, really liked it. But yeah, go for the throat in a fight. It's a dirty shot, but it's gonna shut someone down really quick. Um, but I mean as we can see, she shot her foot. Um, figuratively speaking with this fight with this girl because now the dude that she liked doesn't like her at all. Any little chance that she had is just done, son. And I think this song was about to just connect to this next song, so I apologize for stopping it. Um, But we're just going to let it run through a couple songs. Sneaky, creepy, money seeking, always peeping, fucking creeping, got it on the down low. It's how you think you always sneak it, possess my brooms. I've tried to make you listen, but you won't, it's your way, right? Killing kids all day at night, prescription pills. Oh yeah, the production on these songs are definitely a lot better. Try to make you listen, but you won't because it's your way. I know a couple people like that. Fucking bitches. I like that song, actually. I really liked the uh, the message of it. I feel like it's her talking about, you know, fame and, and being a public figure. Um, and just kind of the music industry and, and maybe even the entertainment industry in the industry. She say at the very end, you don't sell or in the chorus, you don't sell unless you fuck every authority. 
which is a very, very uh, big thing within the industry as well. The whole Me Too movement, um, all of that stuff coming out. That's like it's such a fucked up thing about the industry, music industry, film industry, entertainment industry, whatever fucking industry. No matter what industry, you shouldn't be doing that kind of shit for power and authority and unlocking certain doors. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I think, I think Show and Tell is probably the one that I can. I don't want to say relate to necessarily because I'm not a public figure. I'm not a, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not. I'm just like a dude who stares at a camera and makes youtube videos all day so but i i i can get it i guess if i were to put myself in her shoes if that makes sense um of all the shit that you would have to deal with don't cut me punch me just let me go sound effects. I think my biggest thing I had with uh with the Crybaby album and this album too right now. I I'm going to go ahead and say I mean 6 songs in I'm I'm kind of not really feeling this album either. Um and I think the biggest thing that it comes down to is just the relation of it. Um I under like I understand it's a whole concept, right? It's a whole story. It revolves around this Crybaby character. I get it. I haven't watched the music videos. I know there's a short film about it. So I get I get the whole concept. I understand it. Um for me I just don't really relate to it. You know what I mean? I it, I mean I know a lot of these songs are talking about like adult issues and kind of like a younger person's perspective on that, but for me, at least, I I can't really view those same issues from that mindset because I'm not at that mindset anymore, if that makes sense. If I can understand being like fucking 10 to like 15, 16 maybe, listening to this album and just being able to just really relate to everything that's going on because, again, I would have been in school. I would have had a realized and dealt with a lot of the shit that goes on but i've been out of school for so long guys i'm almost 30 years old i've been out of high school for like 11 years i just don't have that mindset anymore um and i think that's the biggest thing of why i just can't seem to connect with any of this music um as well as i have with other music it's just because i I'm just mentally I'm just not there anymore. And that totally just sounds like I just said all Melanie Martinez fans are like 12 year olds, but that's not what I mean. Um Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Did that make sense? Yeah. 
I'm scared. Never signed up. Oof. I do like the production on the album, though. I will say that. Feeling unsure of my naked body. Stand back, watch it take in shape. Sure. It's my fault, it's my fault Cause I put that sing on top Now the boys wanna taste to the strawberry chocolate That's my bad, that's my bad No one's talking on to grab Now the boys wanna taste to the strawberry shortcake Taste to the strawberry shortcake The strawberry shortcake and in the window for something An in the window Oh, I was going to transition there. I'm sorry. Ah, didn't know that. <laughs> Is that a girl you sit with me? Table in the back after you see. We can be friends if you want to be. But only till the clock is three. After lunch, we can walk to class. Talk about the boys who we want to smash. Talk about ways to get a little. Friendship that will last forever. 
Okay, I think Lunchbox Friends has been my favorite so far. Is this... I'm starting to kind of... I'm thinking while I'm, like, listening to these songs, right? And I'm listening to the lyrics. Um, and I'm trying to, like... It's like piecing a puzzle together. Is um, is is this whole thing kind of talking about just fame in general? Um, just like the whole concept. I know, like... Like, Crybaby was, like, probably, like, the concept of her growing up and, and who Melanie Martinez is. And K-12 is more Melanie Martinez, since this is her sophomore album, uh, dealing with now being, you know, a f- famous musician and, and artist and everything that has, um, that that comes with it. Um, that's what I'm getting from it. That's what I'm getting from this album right now. Um, and by, and by, by thinking about the album that way, now I, I kind of, now it kind of resonates with me a little more. Um, I mean, I still feel a little weird like I did with Crybaby because it's like a grown ass woman singing and talking like a kid sometimes, uh, so it creeps me out a little bit, but I I kind of understand now. I mean, if I'm totally wrong, then I'm totally wrong. But at least for me, it it makes me appreciate the album a little bit more. Oh oh, stick it down your throat. I'm watching from the bathroom, making sure I don't choke, choke from the words you spoke when you screaming at the mirror. I thought she was talking about something totally different for a second. I don't know why, but I really like when her voice is pitched down for some reason. It's something about the tone or something about the quality of her voice when they pitch it down. It sounds really, really good. I don't I don't know why. gonna go
Those drums do hit hard, though. Yeah, I uh, shout out to the production, or shout out to the producers. I don't know if she produced it herself or if she had someone. Who, regardless, whoever whoever did the music. Um, and I, st I don't. It's weird. It's a weird thing. It's always like the first half of the album. I'm just kind of like, ah, it's okay. And then we get kind of like down to like the last like third of the album and the songs seem to pick up a little bit and I, I i seem to perk up a little more when i'm listening to the songs i don't know why i don't know why it is like that maybe it just takes me some time to get into the groove of things or or what it is but i mean i liked what are the lunchbox friends and detention was pretty good and orange juice was pretty good too those three songs have been pretty dope so far What a creepy ass teacher. I'm so special. Why am I secret? Because you're fucking your teacher, you creepy. This we get a kidnapping song on one album, and then we get a <laughs> teacher sleeping with one of his students in the second album. In the second half of the album, Jesus Christ. Uh, I feel a little weirded out about that song. About I'm about as weirded out about that song as I was about the the what is it tag you're it song, uh yeah okay that that, that that's that that that's how it's gonna be <laughs> I can't even talk uh Jesus help me I did enjoy that song though again which question my mindset here the fuck is wrong with me Ooh. these are the requirements i'm kind of liking this
I think the humor in this album has been A1. Yeah, like I was saying, uh, I will, I, I, I do notice at least in the in the songwriting aspect, there's a lot more humor um, and wordplay in these songs than there were initially in the Crybaby album, which I really love because I feel like it shows a progress in her songwriting um, and the way that she's able to tell these stories. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely a more mature album, I guess, if you want to say that. Uh, I guess if I want to say that. It's definitely a more... Um, um, God, I don't know why. Sometimes I just can't talk when I'm doing these videos, and I'm trying to like get a thought out, and I'm trying to pull it out, and it just doesn't want to come out. But I feel like this is kind of more of a mature album than Crybaby, but not so much far away from the launching pad, if that makes any sense. <sighs> Okay, what I like about that song is basically saying like 
don't be afraid to take a break. Like everyone gets overwhelmed. Like it's good to take breaks, you know, it's good for your mental health. Mental health is a very important thing. Um, but yeah, always good to take breaks. But K12, guys, I personally think K12 is a better album than Cry Baby. I'll give it that. Um, I think the production is immensely better on it. There's not so much of that kind of music box uh, sound, the glockenspiel instrument, which was nice in the very beginning of Cry Baby, but it just kind of started getting uh, annoying toward the end there. Um, so the production is immensely better. Her songwriting is is better as well. I love the I love the sense of humor that she she brought to it in in some of the certain lines that she says. Um, her descriptiveness in her songwriting itself is um, I feel is a lot more intricate in this album than it was in Crybaby as well. So I mean, shout out to the songwriting, shout out to the production on this album. It's a good album. I I respect it as the a work of art and I respect it as its respective album in the concept and I understand all of it. I just think for me the biggest thing is just that I don't I don't know. I I myself personally I find it kind of boring. Um and I think that's just me and my musical taste. I don't think it has anything to do with the album itself. Um but like I said for me I feel like looking at certain things from this kind of perspective, I just can't really relate well because I feel like maybe if I was younger, um, it would impact me and I would feel uh, a lot more relatability with some of the things that she's describing, especially if I was like maybe had just graduated school or was still in school at the time this album came out. Um, definitely, definitely would resonate with me more. But now that I, you know, I, I look at problems in life from a different perspective. Um, not from like a kid perspective. And it's hard for me to look at problems in life from a kid's perspective. Like she's kind of doing in, in this, both her albums. Um, so I think that's why I really don't, you know, connect to the album as much, but then, but like I said, that has in no way any effect on how good the album is or, or anything like that. Um, I think it's a solid album. The concept is solid, everything. I just don't connect with it. Um, but I, I but by not connecting with it, I, I can't say there aren't some songs that I like on this album. Uh, we got Lunchbox Friends, I liked. Orange Juice, Detention, Teacher's Pet. High School Sweethearts was another good one, too. I really liked High School Sweethearts. I really liked the pad that was in the back of that one. Um, Recess was all right. I It, it works as an album closer, for sure. Um, you know, it's talking about don't be afraid of of taking a break. Uh, I think she said something of like, they said that if you take breaks, someone's going to take your place. Which, um, I mean, I, I, being in the kind of around the entertainment industry, that gets said a lot. It's a big thing because the industry is so fast paced that even if like acting wise, so like I worked in like a couple, um, I was working up the acting ladder, I guess, if you want to say that. Um, and then, took a break and you know a year goes by and nobody kind of you have to kind of work your way back up again if that makes sense um which is why the industry is very very competitive and which is why she's saying that you know taking a break someone takes your place just so you guys have a, a better idea um but yeah i think this whole concept is dealing with just her and dealing with fame dealing with being a public figure and the recognition that she now has um, after this first album and taking a look at that, which I really, you know, which I really respect her for. I feel like people should speak more about that kind of lifestyle and that kind of change up. Um, but for me, I, if I were to give this album a rating, I would give it like a five out of 10 for me. I just, I can't seem to connect to it. And that just might be my problem. I do think there is an EP left, though. So, hey, you know what? We'll see what happens with that EP. Now, I know there's a short film with this as well. And like I've said before, um, YouTube has been getting very, very strict with music videos. Um, so I'm, I definitely know for a fact I'm not going to be able to upload a full 
freaking short film to YouTube. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is I'll probably go back. I'll probably shoot all the videos for Crybaby and shoot the video, the feature film video, um, and put that on Patreon either this month or next month. There's going to have to be bonus content because YouTube is getting more strict. So, um, yeah, but guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments, what you like about the album, what you don't like about the album. Um, let me know how, if you do connect with the album, how does it resonate with you? How do you, how do you relate to the album? Let me know all that down in the comments. Remember to like the video, share the video. Remember new Melanie Martinez reactions until we recently for discography. I think we just have one EP left, so that'll be coming soon. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell button so you get notification of when those new videos drop. Hop on over to Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Give me a follow. Merch store is open. Link is in the description. Discord server is open. Link is in the description. And if you would like to help support the Off the Deep End channel, there's a Patreon link down in the description as well where, like I said, you can get access to bonus content, bonus live streams, exclusive album reactions, all that good stuff. So go and check that out if you got the time. That is all I got for you guys today. So, till next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you. Hey, thanks for watching Off the Deep End. Make sure you subscribe, comment, like, and share, and feel free to explore our channel and check out some of our other videos. Remember, new videos drop every week. Take care.